We're on, guys. Sweet. So, happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. How, how goes happy the social Thursday. Isol- how goes the social isolating? It is... It's going. It's a continuous effort. I'm just happy we're through the year that was the month of March. <laughs> <laughs> That's really well put. I'm going to steal yeah. that. <laughs> it, was, it, was the, it was the worst New Year's party ever, though. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah. It it could always be worse. So that's my motto, and my wife uh, will contest to it. Um, she actually hates that. That's my motto because she'll she enjoys venting on occasion, right? Um, and I'll just be like, "Well, it could always be worse," and she's just like, "Shut up! It's terrible now." <laughs> so, what were you guys doing to pass the time away in your isolation? Uh, Watching Tiger King. <laughs> well, I know that's what that's what Dave and I were doing. That's what, what are you doing, Scott? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, you want to talk about lunch? Yeah, Let's oh, lunch. lunch. So we'll is talk about my great. lunch. Uh, yeah, I wish lunch? I could have your lunch. Yeah, so, so tell us a little bit about what we're going to do today in this uh, episode. Well, let's switch over here to my screen. Um, so I got up a little bit early this morning, and I seasoned a half rack of ribs. <clears throat> Ooh, I love yeah, ribs. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? It is. Um, using a local, local place there to season it. And, um, and I put it out on my smoker, and I set up a camera pointed at my smoker, like that. You can see the... The camera is right here. That's not a camera. That's a phone, isn't that it? That is my phone, but I've got an IP cam, uh, IP cam <laughs> thing running on it. Okay. And um, so I actually have a live camera pointed at my smoker, and I thought we could talk about that today. Wow. Have, have, so have I, have I told you guys about my – I've told you guys about my smoker. Do you want me to tell everyone about my smoker, or do you guys want to tell everyone about my smoker? Well, Let's I have, have... – Let's have yeah. you tell us about the smoker, um, since you're the mad scientist behind this thing. Okay, so um, so last spring I went to Costco and I had uh, I have a Costco credit card and they do you know like Costco rebates every year, and I had like a three hundred dollar rebate certificate in my pocket and I swear the Traeger salesman at Costco could smell it right and I'm walking by he's like hey you want one of these don't you and I'm like maybe. So we started talking, and sure enough, he, he sold me he sold me that smoker. And I got it home, and my my I, I love it. I started smoking all the things. I mean, I have smoked uh, macaroni and cheese. I've smoked wow. zucchini. I've smoked uh, chicken alfredo. I've smoked steaks, Ooh. burgers. You name it, I've probably smoked it. Green bean casserole. Oh my god, green bean casserole is amazing. So seriously? what you seriously? So what you do? Um, so, like, you know, you make green bean casseroles, like green beans and, like, cream of mushroom soup, right, with those yep. crispy onion things on top, right? So what I do is I have, a, I have a, like, a perforated tray for smoking, like, vegetables and dry things and stuff. And I put all the I, – I put, like, a whole bag of those, those fried onions on the tray. I smoke those for a couple hours. And then I put those on top of the green bean casserole, right? Wow. So, so it's really, really good. Um, but my complaint about this smoker – and being a smaller smoker, mm-hmm. it heats up really fast, and that's okay. a problem. That's a problem because the the controller in it, what what controls, here let me, um, what controls the 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 mechanism that feeds the fire, is um, it's just a thermostat, right? Okay. So, question for you there: Is this a problem that's unique to this model of smoker, or is it just? Is this a problem in general with most smokers? Um, you know, I would say it's probably a problem with the smaller ones. I haven't had any other ones, so I, I, I don't, I couldn't say for sure. Um, my, my inclination is to think it's because it's so small that it, that it, you know, just heats up fast. But what happens is that thermostat, when the set point falls below, I mean, I'm sorry, when the actual heat falls below the set point, when, um, when uh here actually i i just found found an image here i'll, sh- I'll uh, let me go back to my screen share here we'll share this out with the people 
Where's my screen share? Oh, it's right there. <clears throat> there we go. So, so there's a hopper here for the wood pellets, and there's an auger that feeds the wood pellets into the fire. Okay. Now, the problem is when the, the temperature inside the smoker gets below the set point, say for ribs, like 225 degrees Fahrenheit is a good temperature. When the set point falls below 225, that, that thermostat kicks in and starts turning that auger to feed those pellets into the fire. The problem is that there's a lag time between when the pellets start add, getting added to the fire and when the temperature catches up, because the fire builds up, takes a little bit of time to build up, and then it heats up really fast and overshoots the mark in this, in this small smoker. Okay. So I started doing some research, and I found this guy's project. This is actually, I was inspired by this person's project. He called it the pie smoker. <clears throat> So he he did the same kind of project, basically. He determined that what he needed was something called a PID algorithm. Uh, PID stands for Proportional Integral Derivative. And I think he has a handy... I thought there was an image somewhere. Ah, there it is. Um, that is what PID looks like as an algorithm. Uh, so like like question, the flowchart. Like, mm -hmm. if, if you just say PID and you talk about that algorithm and you share that at like a, a you know social gathering you mm -hmm. instantly have like smart credibility like people are going to be like this person's pretty smart so but the funny thing is i i just learned all this this past summer myself but this is like ancient engineering technology i had no idea this has been around since the 1920s the 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 the, the idea of a proportional integral derivative algorithm the whole idea behind a pid is the closer your process variable reaches to the set to, the closer it gets to the set point the less we try to force it to the set point for example your cruise control in your car okay your cruise control uses a pid algorithm so you're driving down the road and you set your cruise control for 70 and you hit a hill and gravity kicks in and your car slows down to 65. if you ever pay attention to the way the the, the car applies the gas to keep up to speed it 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 starts it starts kind of slow to see if a minor correction will fix, fix it. And then it goes, oh, minor correction is not going to do it. We're going to have to gun it. So then it gives it all kinds of throttle. And then it starts backing off a little bit as it gets closer to 70, right? Well, that's exactly what this algorithm was designed to do. And it's used in all kinds of things. It's used in cruise controls. It's used in robotics. Um, so that's what this guy did. He took this algorithm, and instead of just applying a thermostat to, uh, to feed pellets into into the smoker what he did instead was he applied this algorithm so that it would evaluate the temperature every few seconds and go okay the, the there's our process variable the temperature inside the grill is the process variable our set point is x how far are we from it how far were we from it the last loop we ran and basically how how many how long should we run the auger to feed it this cycle and it varies. It can be anywhere from two seconds to 20 seconds every 20 second cycle. So I was inspired by this guy. Now he, I, I looked at his code. It's all in Python, like most Raspberry Pi stuff is. Um, sure. And and it's 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 good code. I mean, he would tell you that he you know he he feels it's kind of hacked together. Um, but I mean, you know, projects are projects. If they work, they work. But he had a few. He had like a cloud dependency in there, and I don't like Python. I just don't. I mean, I, I am a I am a novice at Python, and mm -hmm. I'm probably going to stay a novice. I mean, I, I I like my .NET world, right? So let's sure. talk about that. Uh, I believe when .NET Core 3.0 shipped, uh, that sort of set out to address this misconception that .NET isn't uh, suitable for a use case like this. Um, so is that what you were doing here, is using .NET Core 3.0 to solve the problem? Um, preview, yeah. Um, actually, yeah, I had, um, uh, I, I was doing it in on 2.2 with the preview bits for the IoT stack, uh, originally, but then, but yeah, it's all 3.0 or 3.1 now, I think. Uh, so yeah, this, so I, I took his idea, I took his implementation of the algorithm and based mine on that, um, and I'll be perfectly honest, I'm not a calculus whiz, I don't fully grok the algorithm. I, it, it is what it is. Um, but I took his idea and um, 
much like he did, I grabbed a Raspberry Pi and designed some circuitry. Uh, let me actually, well, I'm ah, over here, my photo album. You can see I, I had an I had a phase of experimentation because uh, the 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 te first technical problem I had to solve is okay. So there's this heat probe inside the smoker. Mm -hmm. How do I get the temperature off of that heat probe? Well, it turns out that there is um, that there are a whole lot of different what they call thermistors, different types of thermistors. There's a type of resistor for managing uh, for for uh, measuring temperature. And in this case, this thermistor in this uh, this heat probe in the in, in the uh, in the grill is called a RTD, resistive temperature device, resistive temperature detector. Sure. Um, it's it's a little string, a little wire of uh, I think it's platinum and some other stuff. And anyway, the basic idea is it has. You, you pass a current through this thing, and it, it its resistance varies based on the ambient heat. Okay, cool. Um, this is not math. This is not math I had to figure out. This is math I had to research and borrow because it's math that's already been done. It's well-known coefficients and formulas and stuff. Um, again, I was a little out of my element because I'm again I'm not a calculus type person. But um, so anyway, I had to design a a, a circuit board here. A, a, uh, a, you can see my prototype breadboard here, um, that had some terminals that I could connect to that to those probes. And this chip right here, um, where is my? Nah, eh, I can't well, get, I can't get Zoom it to here. work. <laughs> I, I, I was just going to ask. I mean, like this. So there's a couple questions that come up right away. So I was initially going to ask, how does this pertain to .NET? We've already crossed that bridge. But now now that we're getting into like custom boards and stuff, just so I can understand the original problem domain, the Traeger controller that exists doesn't currently handle uh, the variance. It's, it's more binary, right? So you have this .NET project, some source code, this algorithm that can solve the problem. And now we're talking about like this custom breadboard so how how do you get from you know identifying this problem to deep researching you know adafruit and raspberry pi and circuitries and algorithms and oh my there's all sorts of things going on here and it's i'm kind of curious how how this came to be i guess and how you decided on i need to create a, a breadboard at this point in time Fr frustration <laughs> <laughs> no no so so um yeah so the, the, definitely the factory controller was overshooting temperatures and okay. um, and you don't want to overshoot your temperatures when you're trying to smoke something low and slow right so it, you're you're right it's strictly binary on or off you know are we are we hitting the set point or are we not hitting the set point and then we're overshooting the mark so like I would have the temperature set for 225 it would fall below 225 the next thing you know we're, we're it's at 300 325 350 which is wow. way too hot for what I'm trying to do I'm trying to smoke the ribs not cook them right um so i started thinking well what type of solution is there here i started doing some research and and you could buy aftermarket pid controllers they're like 200 okay. 300 bucks right oh wow. okay sure and it was it was just i think just luck that i i lucked into this guy's blog here where he talked about doing it um with a Raspberry Pi, a PID controller with a Raspberry Pi. So that's yeah. that's where I got the inspiration. I, I saw what he had done. I'm like, I can do that, but I'm going to do it a little bit better. I'm going to do it in .NET. Yeah, that's really cool. And then also made me think, like, you should potentially take this idea to Traeger and be like, here, we'll sell you, uh, you know, we'll start manufacturing a controller that has this PID in it. And it runs .NET, and we'll solve your problem. You pay us, though, now, right? So now you're the salesman offering up a solution to all Traeger users. I mean, yeah, I could. <laughs> but, I mean, I'm an open source kind of guy, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I just open sourced it. If people want to build it, I, I will be happy to help you build it. Um, awesome. But so so he had this whole shopping list. I actually I didn't I didn't steal his design for the electronics. His design for the electronics relied on a chip that I couldn't get. Uh, so I, I used a different chip. That's this um, that's this guy right here. This this black rectangle. It's okay. what we call a uh, analog to digital converter. 
So okay. what that what that analog to digital converter is actually measuring on this circuit is it's measuring the voltage drop on this terminal right here. Or I'm sorry, on this terminal. This terminal over here is the one that goes to the to the probe uh, inside the grill, and it's measuring the voltage drop. So it knows I'm putting 3.3 volts into it. On the other side, what's coming out of it, and it takes that number coming out the other side and reflects that. It's an analog to digital converter. It's a 10-bit converter, so it reflects that in a value of 0 to 1,023. All right, so then I um, do some more math to turn that into a temperature, and I feed that to the algorithm. And we'll look at the code here in a second. Uh, but just to finish explaining the build, um, I went and also added a display. This was my test display. I, I actually went with a bigger display for my final version. Um, I learned how to solder over the summer. This is that same breadboard, but on a permanent, uh, what you know, a, a permanent prototype board. So if you look at the other side of this guy, there, that's my first soldering project. I'm pretty proud of it. Wow, that's really cool. So, um, oh, so that, well, that that's when I was well, testing it in the oven. <laughs> so you had mentioned a cost before. I think of somewhere around two hundred dollars for that other mm -hmm. option mm -hmm. what would you say you spent just in hardware for this project you know so not including any time you spent uh developing the software about 60 bucks okay yeah the raspberry pi is about 35 my project box that i put it in was like less than 10 uh the prototype board is like five bucks and all those electronic components are super cheap so somewhere i'd say less than 60 60 65 somewhere in that neighborhood so yeah I, I i built the circuit board oh oh this is fun this is fun so you can see here's here's the controller out of the out of the traeger originally uh this is this is the the, the factory one that's just a, a thermostat and then this is right after i yanked it out and then i noticed on the back as i was looking at the circuit board it's apparently powered by hot anger You see that? No, no, no one. Oh, oh hot anger. I get oh, it. Yeah, yeah. I see that. Yeah, yeah. Right there. Uh, so we I, have I a think, question I, here. I, I, I think they meant auger. Real quick. So uh, Knowles TV is asking, how hard would it be to wire this up to Alexa uh, to provide like periodic updates? Well, you know, funny you should mention that. Um, we'll. we'll let me answer that in just a second as we go through the gallery here, because the sure. last picture here answers that question. Cool. So um, I put together my circuits. I, I jammed them all into, I jammed the Raspberry Pi, a couple of relays to control the auger, the fan, and the blower in the controller, in the, in the Traeger, and my little circuit board. Jammed them all into this project box right there. And uh, you can see I, there's, I yanked out the old controller. Uh, more project box, more project box. You could, I drilled some holes in the top of the project box and put some some uh, cable ties through the holes, and then I just strapped it to the bottom. Oh, I can never remember my zoom it hotkeys when I need them. Um, I just strapped it to the bottom of this Traeger there, so that's where it lives in that project box, that Raspberry Pi, my circuit board, and all that. So my initial way of controlling it, I implemented the whole thing. We're going to look at it in code here in a minute. But I, uh, my initial way of controlling it was, um, was just via SSH. Um, and it turns out that SSH, you know, I SSH into the machine, and I, like, built a little command line tool that I could control it. Or I, or I could do, like, Postman or, or Curl or something and just control the API through that. Um, turns out that that doesn't have a very high wife acceptance factor. You know, my wife is cooking hamburgers indoors uh, on, on the stove. I'm like, well, why aren't you using the grill? She's like, I don't know how to use that thing. And I went, oh, okay, good point. Well, so, why isn't your wife learning curl commands? I know. Why Why <laughs> isn't she? So in answer to Noel's TV question, um, I implemented the Microsoft bot framework to communicate with it. Uh, oh. And I implemented a Skype bot. So this is this. these are some shots of testing the Skype bot. So it's not Alexa. But it's very, very, very similar, and it's it's actually not a thing at all. Actually, I think Tim Heuer has um, has a, an Alexa library built on the Microsoft Bot framework, so it would not be a hard thing at all for me to Alexify it. 
Alexify. Is that a word? Yeah. Null's TV says, Alexa, warm up the grill. Yeah, so you... no, exactly. Exactly. It would be exactly like that. It, it's on my list of things to do this spring, this summer, you know, etc. That'd be so, awesome. So that is, that's the building of the grill. I have something else to show you right now. Um, if I go out here and I run uh, VLC here, I've actually got a camera outside pointed at it right this moment. In fact, yeah. this, this is through VLC. I'm going to do this right here through our, our tools. Uh, I'm going to switch over. Look at that. That's the meat cam. Wait a second. Wait for it. Meat cam. Okay. Yeah. So um, there's our there's the meat cam, and it's just pointed at the pointed at the grill. It's so exciting. It's kind of raining out there today. Um, I mean, we could have called it like the grill cam, but yeah, meat cam. I'm with you. Is there meat on the? Oh, I saw it smoking. Okay, it's confirmed. yeah. There's little. You'll see some smoke come out of it. There's Boomer. Boomer's my lab. Oh, cool. She's a good girl. <clears throat> and um, yeah, so. Going back over here to to us. You guys want to see some code? Let's look at some code. Yep. Okay, we can do code. Somewhere I have Visual Studio. There it is. <clears throat> so the very very first thing that um, ooh, I know something. You, what? This is called Inferno. It is called Inferno. I like and, that name. And in fact, if anybody wants to go look at the source right now, um, there is the GitHub project, github.com slash camsoper slash inferno. It's burning hot. Awesome. Cool. Thank you for that. I'm going to check that out. Uh, so we'll go back over here to Visual Studio. So I, in the Inferno solution, I've got a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of projects. I've got... Here, let's let's collapse collapse them all first. I've got I've got the API project. That's the that's the core. That's a web API um, that that we can send REST commands to to tell it to do stuff and get you know get statuses and whatnot. Um, we've got the bot library. So that's the actual logic for the bot. It's actually deployed as a web app out on Azure. We have the CLI that runs actually on the Raspberry Pi if I want to SSH into it um, and, and control it that way. We have an, uh, a common library that's just, you know, common models that go, go across everything. Uh, we have the relay listener. So the relay listener is it's uh, an implementation of Azure Service Bus Hybrid Relay. Um, Azure Service Bus Hybrid Relay is a mechanism by which you can take uh, you can expose selected bits of functionality inside your network, outside the network, securely without having to open holes on your firewall. So that's how the bot that lives in Azure App Service is talking to the smoker. When the smoker starts up, it connects to that relay, and then the bot interacts with the relay. I didn't open the smoker up to the, uh, up to the outside world on my firewall. And then the last project I've got there is Temperature Logger. Temperature Logger, it's just a little uh, command line thing that um, just pulls the status and writes it out to a CSV file so I can, I can uh, look at, I can make pretty charts. Actually, I made, I made it specifically to make a chart to tweet and say, look, it was successful. So, <laughs> <clears throat> so we'll, start, we'll start with uh, the API. And like I said, I implemented it as... Um, as as an API, it just has a. Uh, so when you say there. API, do you mean web API or? It is a web API. Yep. Okay. So the the executable starts and uh, it sits there and listens on port five thousand or whatever the default is, and I've got a number of controllers here. Um, the so the... since it's since it's web API and this is .NET Core three point oh, you get all of the amazing bits out of the box like. Uh, you know, first-class citizens such as, you know, logging and dependency injections. I see that you have an iSmoker interface, and I'm assuming that that's given to you via, right, constructor injection, mm -hmm. and then you, mm -hmm. you have, like, okay, cool. Now, I, now, I didn't write any tests because, honestly, <laughs> a lot of this stuff, I'm not sure how I would test it. I'm not sure how I would mock, you know, mock the conditions for a fire, 
and and re- you know, having the PID <laughs> algorithm 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 respond to temperature fluctuations. I started. I, I originally when I started writing this, I was gonna I was gonna write tests as I was writing it, and then I, it got to be a thing where I'm like, okay, the, these these tests that I'm simulating just don't make any sense. I can't rely on these, so I just got rid of them. And I might revisit that, but it is all written uh, dependency injection. Yeah. So uh, that that smoker class. There's the service. That's the main guy. That's where all the real logic lives. Okay. Uh, it's it's. I could like to refactor this. It's a little bit long. I mean, it's not too bad. But l- let me let me. We'll just walk through it. So, mm-hmm. if for example, you call the mode controller, mm-hmm. and you are posting to set the mode to a smoker mode. Smoker mode can be smoke, hold, shutdown. Uh, what else did I make? I made error um, and ready. I think those are the five modes. Sure. And so you set a mode. Um, if if it's not successful, we return a 403. But you can see what's happening is this in this controller. This controller has been injected with the eye smoker dependency. So all mm-hmm. that this this controller is doing is on eye smoker. It's calling set mode. That's all. So- so iSmoker is something you created, uh, an mm-hmm. interface you created. And my other question would be, are there any NuGet packages that you installed in this solution to um, use any of this functionality? Or is this just .NET Core that you're using? So yes and yes, kind of. Um, so you'll, if we, the NuGet packages that we have are, um, we have a couple of Azure dependencies, right? Um, well, there's the bot framework. Somewhere in here, I thought I would have. Well, we'll go to installed. There we go. So there's the uh, there's the Azure Relay um, uh, NuGet package. We also have the 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 two that are important to anybody wanting to do IoT on .NET Core um, are this IoT.device.bindings and where is it? There it is. System.device.gpio. And so you're talking about Azure dependencies here, which um, would lead me to my next question, and that is, what does it actually cost to use those Azure dependencies, if anything? So uh, for the folks in the audience, they might be wondering, well, if I were to do something like this, what would I expect to pay? So the the um, that's a good question. The it actually doesn't cost anything except. Let me get to that. The the bot code is hosted on a free app service, so that's not costing me anything. I mean, it goes to sleep, like it only has like a what, like a 10 second, or 10 second, 10 minute timeout, so it goes to sleep pretty quick. Um, the, uh, um, I lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, so that part's free. The Azure Relay is a little pricey. Uh, it's charged per connection, um, and I, if I just leave my smoker connected to it all month, um, it's a single connection, and it will cost me about nine dollars a month just to leave it connected. Um, but if I turn the smoker off, then it disconnects, and there's no connections, so it doesn't cost anything. We had a question here, real quick, in the chat. I want to bring up. So there, uh, LQ Dev One is asking, what's the difference between the two packages that you called attention to, like the IoT dot device dot bindings and, and, sy- the... and system dot device dot GPIO? That's a good question. So. Um, the 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 system dot device that gpio is where they've put all the and that that's from that is a dot net that's a microsoft project it's open source but it is it is ours um it's where they've put all of the functionality for um like like the basic functionality for dealing with gpio general purpose input and output like and, and those the, the the associated um uh technologies like PWM, I2C, SPI, um, and all those on small devices like Raspberry Pi and um, Meadow and you know those other those other IoT devices. The bindings package, however, is where they've put together a lot of um, a lot of ready to use, I would say drivers would be a good way to think of it. Like for okay. example, the one the one of the reasons why I went with the the model of ADC chip that I did. It's called an MCP3008. One of the reasons I went with that instead of the one that the other guy was using, aside from the fact that I couldn't get it, but one of the reasons I went with that was that 
there was already a binding for it in iot.device.bindings and there was already some sample code that i could borrow to figure out how to get the the information off of there cool so uh yeah so the smoker just to, just to kind of show you the algorithm real quick um it, it's, it's it's just a loop this right here the mode loop is the main main loop right um if and every it runs this to completion and then starts over now depending on what mode we're on it might take a different amount of time to run uh in this case um uh, like right now what we're doing is we've got it in hold mode so it's gonna it's going to uh await hold if we go down to hold go to definition hold <clears throat> says, okay, very first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure the blower is on, so we're feeding oxygen to the fire. Um, if I have a service running in a separate thread called FireMinder, its whole purpose in life is to decide whether, whether or not the fire is started and whether or not it's healthy. And um, if it's decided that the, if, if the fire has not been started yet, then we're going we're gonna to actually not do anything we're going to go back to smoke mode because smoke mode is based on traeger's factory algorithm where the it's like 15 seconds of pellets and 45 seconds of doing nothing to just let the pellets burn so that's what we do to start up with uh if the fire started um long story short we feed some variables to our pid class and we get the control variable and if from uh I'm sorry. We get yeah, we get uh, we get what this value u and this value u is the the uh, the percentage of time that the auger should be running according to the algorithm. Uh, the the time that we run it is that percentage times however long a hold cycle is. And the hold cycle I've got it configured right now for 20 seconds. So we're going to run between zero to 20 seconds. However. We also clamp it so there's a minimum. There's actually a it's actually a twenty uh, a two second minimum to make sure the fire doesn't go out. So where is it that you configure that hold cycle duration? Is that in like an app settings JSON file? <laughs> it should be. Unfortunately, um, right now it is a hard coded value. Uh, where is it? It is somewhere up. Yeah, it's, it, it's right there. Yeah. Up. Oh, yep. There it is. Uh, Time span from seconds twenty. Um. So yeah, this this brings up a lot of questions now. So I, in looking at this, I think this is amazing. I think you've done an excellent job. I'm curious though, like if we were simply trying to override that binary bit of the controller that exists out of the you know the the manufactured version, um, this seems potentially a little bit heavy-handed. And correct me if I'm wrong, because it's controlling every finite detail: the auger, the fan. It's looking at ranges and temperatures and all those different things and I, i'm certain that a lot of those are involved with that pid algorithm that we talked about um really the only thing just to cut you off dave really the only thing that the the algorithm is concerned with is how long we run the auger the the okay. running the running the blower is a constant anytime the fire is lit all right so okay. that's that just has to be done and okay. then um what's the other so the auger i've got three relays in there auger blower What's the other relay? I'm blanking out. Auger, blower, and igniter. Igniter, thank you. Uh, the yeah, right there, right there. It says that. Um, the uh, the other relay is the igniter, and of course the igniter is only it's just a, a hot rod that generates heat okay. to light the light the pellets. Um, so it's only it's only lit up you know up until the point that it, that the fire minder decides the fire is lit, and then it's like okay, we don't need that anymore. So yeah, the, the the PID algorithm itself is only concerned with the blower, but like the FireMinder is another service that I kick off in another thread that's running as a background thread. And this this code I'm not crazy about. It's a little kludgy and it, it makes it makes some some assumptions that I probably shouldn't make. But long story short, what we're doing with this code, like for example, if we are in a cooking mode, right? I have some modes are cooking, some are not. And uh, this is how we determine if the fire is started. So we, we have our ignition temp. What we consider, you know, if the, if the fire inside the smoker is greater than this, then there's probably a fire lit, right? Okay. Um, that's how we determine that the fire is lit. Uh, if the, if, for example, we, the fire has been lit, but the fire, the temperature has gone below what we call our check temp, in other words, our, our minimum, there, I, there's a threshold that I, I feel like indicates the fire is going out. 
then we we set a a condition called fire check is true and uh, we know to come back on previous loops to check and see if it improves and if it improves great if it doesn't we end up setting an error mode and shutting the whole thing down because obviously there's something going wrong couple of things for you so you'd mentioned you're not happy with the way this code looks i would say to anyone in chat or you know anyone watching um, this is an open source project and so if you're interested in contributing to it i'm sure cam would welcome pull requests and um, even if even if you don't have the hardware to test it on i'll test it for you yep uh, my <laughs> other question was um so have you published any NuGet packages uh, for this project? If someone wanted to consume this, would they build it from source in that GitHub repo, or, or is there a, a NuGet package they could install? Yeah, I don't I like have that any idea. NuGet pack. I have not built any NuGet packages yet, so it's it's all source on GitHub. This and my other project, and I apologize to people who actually dig my my projects that I do, my little IoT projects. I know. NuGet packages would make life better, but uh, I just haven't gotten there yet. So it's it's all Git clone right now. Cool. Hold that thought. I just got an, uh, an alarm. I'm going to switch us over to the meat cam, and you guys can, can talk amongst yourselves while I take my headset off. Um, meat cam audio should be on too, I think. Um, I am going to take my headset off. I have to go spray apple juice on my ribs, and I will be right back. Ooh. Apple juice on the ribs. That sounds really, really good. Uh, my question would be, why isn't that spraying of apple juice automated? Uh, it seems like an opportunity there that could become part of this project. Right, right. Yeah, that's that's a great point. Totally serious. <laughs> Instead of like an alert, just trigger that to happen. Well, I guess you have to open it. Like, how would you keep the apple juice in there? Lots of questions. Yeah. Oh, that's Lots amazing. that could go wrong there, but... I'm I'm very happy that he told us that was apple juice because I would have been like, what is he spraying on there? <laughs> that's great though. I am so jealous of his lunch versus mine. That that's that's amazing. Well, and the best part is he controls this from the comfort of his own home. He doesn't have to go outside to ignite the the smoker. Right, right. That's really really cool. I think this is super neat. Um, the code. There's some things in the code that I keep. You know, I'm just kind of curious about like determining whether or not a fire has started and stuff like that so it kind of makes me think is there a way to know like to read that off of the board that exists rather than doing all the custom stuff here um probably not i mean <laughs> I, so the the board that's in there um still have it here it, it's it's a custom thing i mean they've they all and there's no there's no software involved. I don't even think there's firmware involved. I think it's all um, circuit board logic type stuff. Uh, so cool. so we, what what I had to do was was recreate what they've done here in in in, in terms of supplying power to those three uh, uh, okay. those th those three devices and reading temperature. Awesome. We That's have cool. a uh, question in the chat from Nulls TV. Uh, Cam, does your algorithm account for rain? And then that actually leads me to another question. How does this thing work in in the winter months in Kansas City, dealing with the snow? Does that affect um, the algorithm in any way? Actually, it makes it run way better. Um, the, these oh, temperatures that we have right now, let's... Um, Let's go out there. Is that because it's like less um, less variance in the in the temperature? It's it, it, well, it's because it be, honestly, it's because it has to it has to do a lot more work to keep the fire up to temp, which means it, it has it, it has a much easier time not overshooting the temp, right? Well, yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, right now you can see the 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 grill temp is pretty much right where we want it. It's um, I keep hitting the wrong stupid button and that was rain right you didn't just forget to turn your slip and slide off in the backyard no, that, no it is raining out there um but you can <laughs> okay. see that our grill temp is pretty much right at the set point so it's right where it should be and i also put the probe in the ribs i never put a probe in my ribs usually just because i normally just I, I know how long i cook them I, I smoke them for three hours and then i i, I cook them for two hours and then i finish them for like another hour um, but I went ahead and put the probe in there just so we'd have numbers to look at today. Awesome. That's really cool. 
Or, or if we didn't want to use, if we didn't want to use uh, SSH here, uh, somewhere I have a Skype window. Uh, for the folks in chat, keep the questions coming. If there's anything here that uh, you're curious about, um, let's make sure we ask those questions to, to Cam. Ooh, I've got a question. Um, social distancing, can you, like, UPS me some ribs? Uh, <laughs> that's a good question. I, 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 maybe with some dry ice? <laughs> <laughs> So you can. Right, so you've got Skype up, yeah. Yeah, and I sent it a status request. It takes it a few seconds to wake up uh, because you know it's hosted on a free app. The bot is hosted on a free app service, and then the hybrid relay goes to sleep, and then you know there's all these things that have to wake up after things time out. So it takes a few seconds, but here we go, right there. Um, there's our status. So we are um, a little hot now it's it's added a little temperature over the over the uh over the set point but um can you can you run that real quick on the inferno ssh i want to see if the if they're reporting similar temps again because that one was 236 yep. okay it is cool i have a uh, feature request for you could we uh have an option maybe through an app settings json flag to uh convert to celsius instead of fahrenheit Oh, yeah. right. Well, so interestingly enough, I do all the math in Fahrenheit. I mean, in Celsius. Um, if we go to my, so I made I made an abstraction here for the art, what I call the RTD array. That's that circuit board I made with the with the ADC chip on it. Because there's actually two RTDs. There's the there's the one inside the grill chamber, and then there's the one that you stick in the meat. So there, there's two of those, so I just call it an array, and I, I wrote this this abstraction to to handle the array and do all the logic of, of reading uh, the, the temperatures and doing the math. Uh, but yeah, we get down here, and I actually do all of the important math in Celsius. So we, we get the Celsius temperature, and then the very last thing I do is I return it in Fahrenheit. That's Fahrenheit. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Um, so another question I had now, in looking at this code... Uh, two two questions. One, can you use C sharp eight? And the second question would be like, if you make updates, what's your CI CD pipeline like? <laughs> like how how can you like deploy this code? Like, if we wanted to say, oh, let's add, um, you know, Celsius as our our options here for the readout. Um, how quickly would it take for you to update that and then also like see the results? You just had to go there. Yeah, I don't. Have, <laughs> I, I I don't have a CID a CICD pipeline at all for this. Um, it, my 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 development loop is this right there. When I'm <laughs> when I get to a point where I'm like, okay, let's put it on the smoker and see what happens. I run publish dot bat and publish dot bat builds the uh, builds the um, what they call self contained deployment that has all of the dependencies, all the .NET dependencies required to run on Linux. And then I secure, copy it out to the smoker, and then reboot. So it's not, not, nothing's automatic, but I did, you know, uh, the, Hanselman actually posted uh, a blog post, I don't know, probably, f ah, probably five, five to ten years ago. It's an older one. But I remember him talking about all these things that he's working on where, you know, you do these steps in your development loop over and over and over and over again that where if you take just five minutes to automate just the simple steps, you get some of the mm -hmm. benefits of, of like a CI CD pipeline. And, and that's, you know, that's what, what we're seeing here is I've automated the, the deployment, at least. I have this one batch file. Okay. So, I mean, technically, you could have this batch file executed after you do, like, a git commit or something, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah, okay. So I rather than know, being, I like, up in a from. build server somewhere, you could use your machine to, to act as that, because it's all local anyways. Right. That was the other. That was the other reason why I did this. Um, you know, the, well, I won't say what the other reason. That was one of the design considerations that I had when I did this project on my own. Looking at the previous project that the guy did in Python, he had cloud dependencies. He was using Firebase for his. Uh, for, he, he was he was storing uh, telemetry data in Firebase. And I'm like, I, I I don't want cloud dependencies. I'm, I want my my grill to be disconnected. Now having it. The Azure Hybrid Relay is there, so I can connect to it for, through Skype. But if the internet's down, I still have I can still SSH right into it. Uh, so I'm curious about Firebase. Is 
can can Firebase be used like on the client? I, I thought Firebase acted as like a client side browser database. I could be wrong though. He, I, I, I could be wrong. I could be wrong too. So I I won't I won't. I, I won't claim to know anything about Firebase other than that he gave instructions to go to the Firebase site and create an account and do XYZ, and I'm just like, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> cool, man. This is awesome. Uh, anything else I, you guys uh, like to see in here? Uh, yeah. So LQ Dev one had asked, you know, he, he actually put a link in there and suggested a uh, Teams card status updates with pictures of the ribs. That's not a bad idea. Oh, I like that. Well, I'm actually going to have to migrate it away from Skype at some point because um, they've they've deprecated. So the the Microsoft Bot framework has deprecated Skype support. I don't know what that's about since we own Skype, but okay, whatever. Um, so I'm actually going to move away from Skype and move over to. I'm either going to build a custom web thing or I'm going to use Slack probably or Teams. Um, but uh, but yeah, the the adaptive cards in Teams sound like a good. Sound like a good uh, use case. Sounds like you have a fan already, so Knowles TV wants to buy an expensive Traeger <laughs> just to rip out the guts. <laughs> By Mission all means. accomplished. I'm, I'm glad I've inspired you. <laughs> so oh, so yeah. I don't know if you guys can see the stream. We have the meat cam in the lower right corner right now. So uh, the next question I would have, uh, so when your ribs are done, are you able to then issue a stop command from your office there to shut off the smoker without having to physically walk out and do it yourself. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. So, um, where is, so that's set mode, set mode, set mode. Um, My other the, yeah, uh, the, less the, it, serious it, question would be, have you ever had a uh, an issue with, uh, say, a grease fire? <laughs> <laughs> and how, how does the uh, project handle an emergency situation like that? Say an emergency stop. So what Scott's not telling our viewers is he and I were in <laughs> he and I were in a, a writing session together because we we have have co-written a lot of things together. Um, Scott and I work really well together, and, and uh, we've we've done a couple of uh, Microsoft Learn modules, and we were working on one of them while I was developing this originally. And he and I were in the middle of, of doing something. I don't even remember what it was, but I happened to... What? How did I... I remember what it was. I was cooking ribs for lunch just like I am today. And I went out and looked at out the back door and went, oh, that's not good. <laughs> Came back into the office and said, Scott, I'll have to call you back. I got to go deal with a fire. <laughs> So, and the language was a bit more colorful it, than, it, than that. Yeah, oh. it, it was. So um, here, we'll, we'll, so what happens when that fire goes out? If the fire goes out, um, and what happened in this case, the fire goes out, um, and it just starts shoveling pellets in, but the pellets aren't igniting. So we get this big pile of pellets that's just smoldering. And eventually it reignites. And will reignite all the way up into th through the auger tube up into the pellet hopper. And that's what had happened in this case. Is I, I had a fire in my pellet hopper. <clears throat> um, so that's, that's why the FireMinder exists now. That's why there's a FireMinder... A process that runs as a it runs as a separate thread, um, and it is always um, it, it, it probably errs on the side of caution. I've had it I've had it um, I've had it hit like, this exception. Um, it's not an exception. I've had it hit this state a few times where it just goes. I don't know what's going on with the fire. It's not behaving like it should. So I'm just gonna set mode to error, which the the error mode. Um, it's like a fail-safe safety net where it just kills it. Mm-hmm. The error, I don't even remember where I put... Yeah, I can't remember where I implemented that. Uh, I would have to look. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, shutdown. So you can see, if smoker mode is error, we call shutdown. And what shutdown does is... Um, oops, not paste. Uh, go to definition. What shutdown does is it turns the auger off immediately 
turns, makes sure the igniter is off, leaves the blower on because what we actually want it to do is we want it to blow until any smoldering that's going on in there is completely out. Uh, we want it to, everything that's in there, we want it to burn. Um, th we hopefully we hopefully get to this point before we get, this, getting to this point should prevent that situation that I had with Scott, where the, where the fire went up the tube and all that, because bef before it gets to this point, it should burn up all the fuel and just say, okay, we're not going to add any more fuel to it, but it's not responding like we think it should. So was the issue that shutdown was called in your case, but the auger, blower, and igniter objects were not in your try catch here well what what actually happened <laughs> what actually happened was the fire went out and i had no no way to determine that the fire went out so it just kept adding pellets and adding pellets and adding pellets and adding pellets until it all reignited into a conflagration right um right. in this what happens now is when the fire goes out it adds pellets for a few minutes and then goes it's not responding okay well we're going to stop adding pellets we're going to keep blowing the we're going to keep blowing the blower and burn everything out so you have a, a meat cam. Uh, what about, as an enhancement, a flame cam? Something inside the grill for that scenario there where you're not sure if the flame had been extinguished or not. You know, and then you'd use computer vision to see if it's a flame or not. Th that's a, well, I mean, how are you gonna how are you gonna heat proof a camera? Uh, so what what you? Well, I wonder if they have those already. They might. You're. Hook it up to, to cognitive services, yeah. So the 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 other um, so oh, LQ, LQ Dev something... one says suggests cognitive services. So yeah, I actually have had that thought, um, and I'm not sure what I want to do there. But my my brother in law said, well, you know, you've already got my brother in law is an engineering type. He he said, okay, you've already got the the RTD probes figured out. Add another RT, RTD probe in the fire pot, right, and monitor the actual temperature of the fire interesting yeah nice. um uh, we do have another question in the chat i want to make sure we get to this um uh, Knowles tv is is asking um can you explain again the purpose of that pid algorithm sure uh, why was that necessary what does it do sure thing let's uh we'll just no not pelvic inflammatory disease that would be the wrong pid do 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 um, proportional, proportional, uh, am I missing? Proportion, ah, there it is, PID controller, there it is. <clears throat> so, um, the, the whole reason why we applied this algorithm, and there's this whole history of it out on Wikipedia, like I said, it's been around for a while, it actually started in the 19th century, it looks like, um, the the whole idea is in a process where you have a set point and a process variable so in this case like when i'm smoking ribs the set point would be 225 degrees and the process variable would be whatever um whatever temperature it currently is inside the grill you have that set point and you want to make your process variable match that set point and the closer it gets to that set point, the less you want to try to force it to match. Okay, um, so the, the the reason I I applied this to the smoker again is because from the factory, the controller built into it is just a thermostat. It's either on or it's off. If we're below the set point, we're adding pellets. If we're above the set point, we're not adding pellets. The problem is, if we're adding pellets up until we hit the set point, that fire is going to keep going and going and going and going once we hit the set point and overshoot the mark. So we use a PID algorithm so that the, as the process variable reaches the set point, we add fewer pellets to get it up to the set point. And, so I think and, this is one of those examples of like if you were to have a graph, for example, right, without the PID, the binary thing that, yeah, like it goes, it's, you get this huge up and down movement with like the standard on and off from the Traeger PID. Whereas with this algorithm in place, it's a lot closer, it's a lot more gradual. And, you know, yeah, I, I think. Here, I, I, I've got a, I can, I can, here's some telemetry I gathered. Um, yeah, yeah. This is perfect. This is. So you, you just. You so, just mentioned telemetry. How are you gathering that? Is that uh, with a tool like App Insights? Um, not yet. Uh, so I could. 
and I, I have had that thought. My other project, my, my home automation project, does use App Insights extensively. Um, this one, so I've implemented it all as an API. I have this command line client down here that I can, I just run this command line client. Uh, let's, there's a CS. I just run this guy, and you see it's just a loop. It just loops and just says, hey, get me the status, right? Um, and and I mean, you can see it's actually just making the, um, it's just an HTTP client making a request against the smoker API that's running. Say, hey, give me yep. the status, and then we're just logging it to a CSV file. So that's how I gathered this telemetry. Just go back to the imagery real quick, because I want to talk about this real quick. So I, th I think this is a great depiction, right? Seeing the factory algorithm versus the one that actually has the smarts built into it. So is there a way... Uh, and maybe this is already something that you have. Is there a way to get like an alert once it settles out to like the ideal steady temperature, right? Because you want to avoid like the low, you want to avoid the high, you want to get it right once it's down. If you just move your mouse like under the one hour ish, so so uh, the, on, on the second one, right? That's kind of when you want to start it. Yep. The next big, um, the the next big. Uh, piece of functionality I want to add to it is notifications. So I, I want it to be proactive about telling me, hey, it's not working, the fire's gone out. I want it to be proactive about telling me, hey, we're at a good temperature now, you can throw your meat on the grill. I, I want it to even be proactive about telling me, hey, you told me to remind you in an hour that this was done. Um, so there, I, I, I do want to build a whole notification subsystem. I just haven't gotten there yet. But I, I part, part of the reason why I built everything the way I did as an API with dependency injection and all that was to make it really easy to add additional services like that. I wonder awesome. if there's an opportunity here to integrate the Twilio uh, SMS APIs. So uh, you could, for example, you know, run to the store while your your uh, smoker's running and be confident that your house hasn't caught fire. So funny uh, you should funny you should mention that. Um, I, I have considered Twilio as uh, to replace Skype. But the, the the thing is, I won't even have to use the Twilio API because uh, that's it's a it's got first party support in Microsoft Bot Framework. It's just a checkbox. Awesome, that's cool. Well, this has been exciting, man. I, uh, I'm, I'm excited for this, uh, and I know that uh, you know viewers are probably thinking, how does any of this pertain back to content development and docs? And you know, if this is the docs show, why have we spent all this time looking at this? And um, you know, we're all members of the the content development, you know, DevRel, so it's all relevant because it's things that we are interested in. So we're excited to share that. So I'd, I'd love to solicit feedback from our viewers. Hopefully they've enjoyed this uh, special episode and we can continue doing fun stuff like this. And I would also wonder if there's uh, if there's enough interest, maybe we'll take a, uh, an episode in the future and, you know, develop a feature on the stream for this project. So for folks who are interested in contributing to Inferno, they get a bit more comfortable with that. Yeah. No, that we would be that would be awesome. Um, and also, if anybody wants to hear about the other project that I ha that I have that I putter around with, the other IoT project, um, my home automation system, I, I, I is is all custom. I have I have a, a a home automation hub that is really just sits there as an API gateway for. Uh, sensors and stuff, but all the logic, all the you know, turning lights on and off, and and notifying me when things happen in the house, all of that is built in .NET. Uh, also, I've got a .NET Core C Sharp um, Raspberry Pi project I did uh, many many years ago, but it was like manual voice recognition and um, integration, and it used Project Oxford before Cognitive Services was even born. Um, but it's a magic mirror; it's a full blown interactive magic mirror with with all sorts of cool things, and I'd love to show that off too. I've got a project I want to do. I keep I've, I've meant to do it the past couple of weeks because we've got all these people nationwide that are working from home now for the first time ever, right? And on my home automation system. It's one of my favorite demos. You'll see it on, uh, if you've ever seen me do this talk or you've seen, um, uh, the, it's not out yet, but I, I filmed an episode of On.net with, um, with Cecil Phillip um, using this uh, technology. I, I, I just have a remote control where I push a button and my house announces to, um, a, a, announces to the kids, hey, be quiet. Um, 
<laughs> so I, I'd like to make I'd like to make a, a, a just a project that does that right just doesn't have any dependencies cool. on the home automation. But where are those easy buttons? Bump up. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, awesome. we're at time. Uh, we all have meetings to get to, and our viewers probably want to get on with their lives. So any questions anybody has about this, hit us up. Anything that you want to see, I you know it's it's our stream. We can put whatever we want on it. So awesome. Thanks, man. Thanks, viewers. Take care. Thank you, everyone, and see you next time. And...